first question about open dialogue is um, where do you think that it uh, fits into psychiatric system? Is it outside the psychiatric system or inside? How, how for example, do you perceive in open dialogue a diagnosis and uh, such such uh, constructs? I, I think the psychiatric system should be based on open dialogue. I think that means that we don't necessarily need diagnosis. I think a lot of people also outside of open dialogue um, are beginning to realize that the diagnostic system is not of much use and in fact it's very often stigmatizing to people. But open dialogue as a way of organizing mental health care, I think it should be the foundation of all psychiatric services. So, uh, how uh, did you uh, come to promote open dialogue? You are an anthropologist, I think. Yeah, that's right. Uh, how did it uh, come to you? Uh, this, I met a wonderful group of people in uh, central Norway who wanted to change the system. Um, and they looked all around the world to see what was the most inspiring way of organizing mental health care, and they found open dialogue. Um, I was working at a university at the time, and they approached us to organize some training, and as soon as they described it, for me as an anthropologist with a focus on relationships and communities, it just seemed like such a, a simple but brilliant way of organizing mental health care. And then that was about 20 years ago, and I've been working with it ever since. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe this, this question is a bit aside. Uh, what do you think about uh, other approaches, like maybe anti-psychiatric approaches or some approaches about uh, transpersonal psychology or something like this? I know that they don't want to use the terms schizophrenia, they use other terms, mm -hmm. but I don't like them too much because I think that they also split the people with schizophrenia from the people with uh, crisis or yeah. spiritual emergency. Or yeah, I think I like that better. I think, I, I, I personally don't think there's any reason to believe that, si that schizophrenia as a well-defined mental illness actually exists. I think what's nice about open dialogue is it is a very open way of organizing the system and the form of care. So you can be a transpersonal psychologist or you can be a cognitive psychologist and there is room for both of those. We're not saying that you have to have a certain belief or a certain understanding, but it's simply realizing that a lot of the suffering we experience is based on a lack of positive, open, caring relationships. And that's what open dialogue tries to bring into to psychiatric care within the context of, of families and networks and communities and cultures and, and social systems. Mm -hmm. So um, open dialogue is maybe sort of a me method of working with people, of approaching people? Yeah, I think uh, not so much a, not we, met a method, but a, an approach and an uh -huh. attitude. And a, but it also entails a way of organizing systems. I think in, in most of Europe and the Western world, mental health care is getting fewer resources and so we're forced into this system where we just give handing out medication because they don't have the funding or the money or the personnel and so open dialogue says that we have to find time to be together to to, mm -hmm. to learn to trust each other um, and maybe uh, uh, do you um, you had some uh, training here in Czech Republic to train people in open dialogue approach and maybe my question is uh, if you also uh, worked with people um, in this approach, I think with ill people or if you are only sort of uh, scientist and philosopher of the approach. Yeah. Well, in, 
in uh-huh. the UK and in, in, in England where we've been doing a project for the past five years, we, uh-huh. we, we didn't think that open dialogue was involving people with lived experience to a large enough degree. We think the, the, the future of mental health care is, is peers or experts uh-huh. by experience. So the model that we use is called peer-supported open dialogue where the peers are much more involved um, uh-huh. and that their experience and, and their expertise as persons with lived experience is acknowledged and appreciated and, and used to help other people come through that sense of spiritual emergence and, 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 and crisis resolution that allows them to, to maybe reach places that they hadn't thought they would be able to reach. Uh-huh. Hmm. Uh, personally, I must say, I. Uh, was uh, cured by the normal system of psychiatry <laughs> and it was very difficult also for my family because no one had enough information and mm. even with me no one sp- was speaking in the hospital they only one once a day two sentences mm. just some question yes yeah. so, so I hope that you will be very successful with this approach. Well, I'm, I'm very inspired by what's happening in, in, in the Czech Republic. I, I, I work both at Zorada 2000 in, in Yesenik and working with the uh, narrative here in, uh, in, in, in Prague. I think there's a lot of people who really want to create change. And I, I think the peer movement is really important, the survivor movement, the mm-hmm. Hearing Voices Network. Uh, is also very strong, so I think there's lots of reasons to, to be optimistic for the future of mental health care in the Czech Republic. Thank you very much for this interview and good luck. Well, thank you very much for interviewing me and good luck with your work.